Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 15th of October 2011. We've continued to have a parade of sea flares and we've seen some exquisite chronal mass ejections as I will show you later. Those of you born between the 24th of September and the 23rd of October are classified as Libras. That is because when astrology was first conceived, the sun at this time of year was in the constellation of Libra. Due to the precession of the equinoxes, that is no longer the case. The sun at the moment is in Virgo. Here's a picture of the sun taken with the Lasco C3 instrument. You can see there are several bright stars in the picture. One of them is Alpha Virgo, commonly known as Spica. All you have to do for the trivia question is guess which one is Alpha Virgo. The answer will be given at the end. Since yesterday, we've had 11 more sea flares and the X-ray background has started to increase. And I note out of the corner of my eye that since I started to put this together, we've had three more, one of which has been fairly substantial at the mid-sea range. So let's take a look at the active regions and see what's causing all this trouble. Currently, we have eight officially numbered regions on the disk, plus three as yet unnumbered regions. Overnight, we lost 1309 over the northwest limb, and 1315 decayed away to a spotless plage. So let's take a look at them individually, starting in the northwest with uh, regions 1312 and 1318. Region 1312 seems to have not changed a great deal in the last 24 hours, remaining a single large spot. Region 1318, on the other hand, seems to have decayed quite a bit, however it did manage to produce one of the sea fairs we've seen. Next we turn to region 1314 in the northeast. It seems to have decayed overnight, losing some of its satellite spots. However, two new regions seem to be popping up nearby, one to its south and one trailing it to the east. Next we move on to region 1319, which has produced many of the sea flares that we've seen. It seems to have decayed quite a bit in the last 24 hours, however it still managed to produce at least four of the sea flares that we've seen so far. It too has some new spots emerging to its east. Regions 1313 and 1320 are near the southwest limb and are getting difficult to see what's going on there. Also, region 1317 seems very stable and hasn't changed very much. So we'll next move to region 1316, which is the largest region on the disk. There may indeed be some growth here, and it actually has got round to producing a sea flare this time. So we should keep an eye on these three new regions that seem to be appearing in the northeast. They may well start interacting with the surrounding existing regions, or grow into a major region of, in their own right. There is also a hint of a region coming over the northeast limb, as there is a bright plage there, though there is no sign of any spots as yet. So let's take a look at the continuous evolution of these regions using the HMI data from the Solar Dynamics Observatory. First the Sunspot movie and then the Magnetic movie. And here I'd like you to concentrate on the emergence of these three new regions, particularly in the Magnetic movie, where their emergence is much more evident. Also look for similar regions elsewhere that might be emerging and do not yet produce spots. There seems to be little or no AIA data again, don't know why, there's nothing on the blog about it. So we'll go to the um, stereo data and first look at the stereo ahead, and then we'll go to the stereo behind, and it also shows the regions that are due to rotate on in the next few days. From the high temperature coronal image from the SXI instrument on GOES, we can see there is a very bright region behind the northeast limb. From the Soho Glasgow instrument, we see that we've had a parade of beautiful coronal mass ejections, some of them relatively slow, some of them very fast indeed, mostly off of the northeast limb. See if you can count how many you can detect. The solar wind has been highly variable. While the temperature remained relatively constant, the velocity has been steadily increasing and the density has been bouncing around all over the place. This probably means that we're beginning to be influenced by that coronal hole I've been talking about for the last three or four days. The high energy electron flux at geosynchronous altitudes seems to be relatively stable, and we've had no proton event in the last day. The auroral zone seems to be a little more active than it was yesterday, but I would not like to live off the difference. The average KP index for the last 24 hours was higher than it was the previous 24 hours, and NOAA hasn't recently issued any space weather warnings. So in summary then, the X-ray background has risen to the B5 level, the sunspot number has increased to 157, radio sun intensity has dropped to 136 solar flux units, solar wind speed has increased to 470 km per second with a density of about 2 protons per cubic centimetre, and geospace conditions are still rated as quiet. So my forecast for the next 24 hours is that sea flares are likely, M flares are possible, 
but X flares are unlikely at the moment. The sunspot number will remain high, CMEs will likely occur, solar wind speed will probably ease higher, but it's unlikely they will get a major geomagnetic storm in the next 24 hours. From the composite coronal image, we can see that this long string of bright active regions in the northeast are going to start coming over the limb uh, for about the next week. So we should have some very interesting times for the next few days. As far as the trivia question is concerned, let me show you how to work out the answer. First you have to find a solar ephemeris online, like this one. Then scroll down to today's date and note the right ascension and declination of the centre of the sun. Right ascension and declination are rather like latitude and longitude, except for longitude here is expressed in hours and minutes rather than degrees. One hour corresponds to 15 degrees. Then you need to find an accurate star map of the region showing the ecliptic and the right ascension and declination grid. Mark along the ecliptic, which is the path of the sun across the sky, where the sun is on that particular day. And then you can note where the stars are around. You can see that Spica is just to the south and east of the sun. So on our image, this star here marked with the circle is Spica. Easy, wasn't it? Anyway, that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.